What was so special about the Promise software that made all these different nations around the world want to buy it? I, and I understand the logic of selling it to all these nations and creating a backdoor. So that was created by Michael Riconosciuto, right? Allegedly. 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 <laughs> we always have to throw the A word in there. I understand using that, selling the software to everybody and creating a backdoor so you could go in there and gather all the information that they have. But how did the Promise software help them on the uh, Cabazon reservation and specifically with the arms sales? Well, th that's problematic because, um, I mean, we've, Got done. A, we did a lot of reporting about what sort of the facilities, I mean, the weapons development facilities. We have the blueprints. They never got built. You know, they did build a casino, mm -hmm. but the um, the the tank ammunition shell plant that they wanted to build, and the chemical and biological weapons manufacturing facilities that they wanted to build, they never got built because I probably because John Philip Nichols was hiring all these murders and uh wagon hunt got spooked and pulled out oh, it got it got too hot because john philip nichols just couldn't help but kill people and, and speaking of got too hot i mean in order to run those vax computers that that um that the promise software ran on these dec vax mini computers there i don't think they could fit they could fit in this room. Yeah, they, they would take fit. up a huge portion of this room, but you need... Like, like vacuum tube computers? Yeah, they're... they're, like, they're they, they play... Ma we show them in the film. They play, like, uh, this... Ma they run on this magnetic tape. Yeah, it's after oh, the, the real, vacuum. the real. The real, the real computers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and you basically... You need, like, kind of raised floors You can and, look up the deck vax mm -hmm. uh, 11... DEC vax. 11780. 11, mm -hmm. You know, basically, okay. there were some dusty old... Uh, there was a, a, a card room, and there were some trailers out out on this reservation. Look at these, you know. Look at this room Scroll where they're, where they're running look, these. Look, or type in 11, 70, 11 slash seven eighty, deck vax eleven seven eighty. After vax at, at the after vax or even that even that's fine. Yeah, eleven seven eighty. It's, there, it's there, suggested there it right there. Uh, Boom! Right. We actually found a working one of these and Whoa. filmed it, which was we have, sick in our recreation. We can't find any evidence that a these machines were on the reservation or b uh, that they could have even supported. That's a great sales sales envelope right there. That one that says "Skip Walter." If like, yeah, it's, down. It's, it just looks cool. I like their sales marketing stuff. And even even Bill, like all he as he went through fact checking that stuff that Michael had initially told him and you know talking to all these people and networking with all these people initially he was able to like corroborate everything Mike said about the Cabazon wagon hut and all these murders and stuff all this that's stuff that's actually like much more incriminating and crazy but he couldn't get nailed down the promise story being out there which yeah. which doesn't mean I mean our, we're, we remain pretty open to it it also there's also other sort of stories about other avenues through Israel and all kinds of other things that, that, that Promise was hacked by those guys. But the story about Michael specifically doing it at Cabazon, we've never been able to like nail that one down. It's, Dan, it's, Danny said many times throughout his notes, possession of a secret is no guarantee of its truth. I think I think that's a really important. You know, people mm -hmm. tell you just because someone tells you in confidence or whatever tells you the secret in this like thing, it doesn't mean it's true. Right. And, right. And and I think some people might say, well, like, well, then what are you guys doing here? Like, what's your documentary about? Like, if you don't think some of this stuff is true, it's like, well, what we found was that that might have been, you know, true or not. There was this weapons like exploration thing going on out there there was a series of unsolved homicides that i think christian does a pretty good job of laying out what actually happened and that they were for people do working with intelligence agencies mm -hmm. and all the other stuff uh <laughs> that 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 danny was on to turned out to be um pretty right on about how and these intelligence story. networks work and people like you know, how people like Robert Wood Nichols and Michael Reconstruido, the stuff that they were involved with that was true, was equally, if I would say not more chilling and strange mm -hmm. and bizarre than just like 
what was going on with Promise at, at, at Cabazon. I think it's a really interesting open question of like, well, then what's the point of Michael saying all this stuff about Promise and Cabazon? And why would he bother? Um, and, you know, we don't truly get into like the, the whys and wherefores of that. But I guess in answer to your question, like, so there's the Mike Riconosciuto promise thing, but I think it, it is important to kind of like lay out Bill's vision and maybe not even Michael's vision of why promise, right? What, what would it, what, because he's not, Michael's not the only one, like Ari Ben Menashe, another slightly slippery character, Israeli spy. We mentioned him in the show. He has a whole other take on, on what's going on with, related, but other take on what's going on with promise and Israeli intelligence mm. and the sort of worldwide distribution of promise. Right. And it's, it's related. It's essentially that, um, Promise, here's like the kind of canonical story, right? Promise was developed to organize information, uh, files for the Justice Department. Mm -hmm. that, that this is this is true, right? In the it was just early a database, mid right? It's a database in an era when there's not that many similar programs, right? Um, you know, sort of early to mid computing when you're using giant. $2 million machines like the deck vax right but that's like early 80s mm -hmm. um by the time this is happening promise is a pretty powerful very powerful according to some it's definitely bill hamilton like five hundred thousand lines of code that can that that what's special about it is uh it can organize all this information but it can sort the information and it can like find patterns within information right so you're looking for if you're in the criminal system you're looking for uh what like you're sorting the basics of like the the judge on the case is the same and here's this defendant who's the same but then you can track other cases and be like oh there's a pattern of crime here here's how here's how this this criminal is actually involved with all these other crimes and here's the here's like the kind of information right. network <clears throat> and promise is good at sorting that and they well, used what it if its a, early findings found that 10 percent of police Police detectives in DC closed a hundred percent, ninety percent, ninety percent of the cases that were closed in 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 that. So basically, like ninety percent of the detectives didn't weren't able to take their cases from arrest to conviction. Only ten percent of the uh, DC detectives were able to do that, and that was just that was unclear until. They were able to uh, take hard data. It's called the know, super cop study. It's like and you data can look mining. It it, so, it, it promise it, it, outside of even our documentary, we don't really get into the details on this, but it was a powerful research tool. Right. In addition to its work for the Justice Department, I think Charles Work, who we interviewed, who was who was one of the kind of I don't know godfathers of this project, who brought Bill into the Justice Department to do it, um, wanted to do research so they could make the criminal, you know ostensibly make the criminal justice system more just or more effective, effective yeah. and 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 find out patterns in law enforcement that would be better for victims for fine you know fine closing cases and mm -hmm. things like that um and so they had these pretty cool big um papers that were written from research done on these massive databases of promise information so then it's like okay well then how does that come how do you get to go from that to a global surveillance network, right? Well, the idea at least is, according to people like Ari or Michael Riconosciuto and other people, is, well, it's just a, you know, it's just a matter of what information you're throwing in there. So if you're throwing in, uh, as, a, as a comparison, say instead of law, legal cases, you're throwing in the phone bills and the water bills and the uh, utility bills of people in um, Palestine, you could sort those names or, you know, or Jordan or wh whatever it was, you could sort those names and find out, oh, this person has like a spike in their water bill for like the last two weeks. Maybe that means that more people are staying there. Maybe that means there's unreported people staying in there. There's some sort of like operation going on mm -hmm. in, in like an insurgent, you know, in their minds, like insurgent, uh, essentially military campaign, right? Right. <clears throat> that, that's happening within the population. So um, you can find patterns, just depends on what you're looking for. And those can be very, you know, valuable. Um, the sort of 
next layer is then, so say you, you are Israel and you sell that to, to Jordan and you're finding out, you're seeing that you're then tapping into Jordan's right. information. They're tracking this information and then you're pulling that information out and you're sorting it against what's going on in right. Syria, Palestine, Egypt, whatever. And you're seeing even bigger picture. Keeping so, tabs on what's going on. So Aries' point that he says in interviews that we have is that this was like... More, He's the Mossad spy? He, well, he was IDF. Oh, uh, IDF, okay. But but uh, Israeli intelligence okay. operative that they just... <laughs> I mean, man, we should tell his story. It's like there's so many amazing sort of like things that we we didn't even get into. Like he was he was separately one of the reasons that we know about Iran Contra. He leaked he leaked um, the the first article about Iran Contra was an article that or was based on information that he leaked. Mm. Um, <laughs> so it's like to a, a Lebanese news magazine, I think. Right. So, um, so you know, years later, he was arrested in 1990 or 89 or something like that for selling like C-130s. three C-130s that were illegally being sold. And he gets arrested in, in, and tried in Manhattan. He gets a public defender. Israeli, the Israel uh, disavows him, says they, that he has nothing to do with the IDF for inter- Israeli intelligence. And then he had and then he gets a bunch of letterhead and stuff that shows oh yeah he is working for Israeli intelligence they're like oh well he's just a low level translator then he gets his passport and it's like as thick as the bible full of like travel to North Korea travel to like Peru to like visit the shining path you know it's like low level translator who's going to like right. know, 90 countries wow. in this thing um, and so he actually argued his way out with a public defender argued his way out of federal charges, got off uh, not guilty uh, for uh, illegal uh, arms ship, aren't illegally shipping these these C-130s. And he's so annoyed, he starts telling anyone who will listen everything he knows about <laughs> everything he knows. Right, is his story. And so, so his point is that Promise Software was this like, better than cheaper and better than satellites for gathering information on whatever Israeli intelligence wanted to know about in the early 80s, early to mid 80s. And the story of how it got to Israel um, from basically Inslaw or the DOJ was that this um, this guy, Dr. Ben Orr, who was an emissary from the Ministry of Justice in Israel, comes to um this is bill hamilton's perspective this is bill hamilton's story the leader the president of insula i'm just throwing mm-hmm. the, that out there comes to insula and uh basically wants like a show and tell i hear you got this new doj supporting so you know prosecution software like let's maybe let's, we want it over in israel this, comes, is, this is in the early 80s this is before all the problems all the lawsuits and all that stuff mm. so he Benor. comes he comes to kick the tires on on inslaw and promise and basically they you know spend whatever the day together and the guy uh the guy leaves he leaves and, and bill never hears from him again at the ministry of justice and then through the course of i think there's lawsuits against the department of justice i believe somehow they get a document that shows that that the Justice Department did actually give Dr. Ben Orr a copy of Promise that he took back with him to Israel. But then somehow Bill figures out that Dr. Ben Orr... Well, Elliot Richardson, the former Department, of, the former Attorney General, who's now Bill's lawyer fighting against the Department of right, Justice, right. does this like photographic lineup or something. Or something. Where, where yeah. he's like showing people in Inslaw like pictures of people you might know and and one of them is a picture that Bill's like I know that guy that's Dr. Benjamin Orr he came and looked at our software years ago and it, Elliot Richardson is like that's not Dr. Benjamin Orr that's a guy named Rafi Itan who's a legendary Israeli Mossad spy who was part of the operation to was the in charge of the operation to get Eichmann out of Argentina when they like brought him back for trial, the Nazi wow. back for trial. Like he's a le- he was called Rafi the Stinker in in Israeli uh, intelligence really? because he had been a uh, some operation early on that he had done. He had like go through the sewers or something, and he got this moniker. I think he was like a little dude who, according to the people who knew him, was just a hard-nosed, right-wing, like, 
tough as nails. You know, <laughs> we got his number it, from one of our friends in Israel. And like, you know, we were a little bit, we basically wanted to like really button late, up our knowledge. Supposedly late, like years later, supposedly Rafa Eitan claimed that the seizure and implementation of this, basically this Israeli promise software operation, um, spy, you know, signals intelligence operation was like the greatest achievement that of Israeli intelligence during his tenure. You know, mm-hmm. he told this to a journalist named Gordon Thomas, who has a lot of, you know, just basic factual, factual inaccuracies in, in his books. So it makes me like wonder like what we're, what's really going on. Cause it's not vet. It's like, right. you know, he says Danny Kessler died in 1990. It's just, slo- just sloppy. You right. know, just as you're, as you're kind of skimming through, you're just like, mm, that's wrong. Mm-hmm, that's wrong. Right. So you start to doubt. Like, it's like, so did, is it true that Rafi Eitan took you aside and like said, like, don't turn, turn the cameras off. And like, let's, let me tell you my, my greatest achievement, which happened. It's like the only time that Rafi tells this to any journalist, like mm-hmm. is, is my theft of the promise software. It's like. What is even going? What is true? What is not? And that's part of the reason. I think another one is just we're condensing so much. Stuff. That's part of the reason. None of that. The Rafi Eton story did not end up in our documentary because it was just became too much of like, wait, what is real? What is not? Like we have mm-hmm. no way of verifying this. But we did. And we I got his know, cell phone from our friend for, in Israel, and then we 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 took like too long. Too long. We. We didn't call him, and then he died like oh, two months after no. we got his cell number. Felt so stupid. We God. just didn't expect him to die. You know, Brutal. right then. Yeah. 